Hey, it's Bruce Woodburn, Cross Country Mortgage, WDBO Radio, with the three big things you need to know. All right, we're going to first just highlight what we're going to talk about. Refinances, jumbo loans, and loan limits changing. So, first of all, loan limits changing. What does that mean? Well, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and HUD have limitations on the maximum loan amount that you'll lend. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are $548,250, where HUD is $356,000 and change. If you exceed that amount, you don't conform. Now, FHA, you can still buy a house for more, but your loan amount cannot exceed three fifty-six. dollars Conventional, you can buy a house for more, your loan amount can't exceed five forty-eight two fifty. dollars Now, If they increase the limits, it increases buying power. We don't know what the limits are, but we got word that they're going up. I will keep you informed. So that then parlays into jumbo loans. Any mortgage on a conventional loan that exceeds $548,250 is a jumbo loan. Now, in the past, many people thought the jumbo loans were inferior or more expensive to a conforming loan. Not with cross-country mortgage. I don't have higher rates for my jumbo loans. There is slightly different lending guidelines and criteria, a little bit more restrictive on credit scores, a little bit more restrictive on debt ratios. Other than that, my interest rates on jumbos are unbelievable. So if you are buying a home in the six, 700,000 or plus, call me, I'll take great care of you. Now, refinances, I made an announcement, but I'm going to do it again because this is super important. I got an, I I read an article, national published article, that 81% of people that qualify and should refinance have not refinanced yet. That's nuts, okay? But I'm here to help you. So if you know anybody that hasn't refinanced yet, at least send them to me. Let's look at it and see if refinancing is the right thing for them to do. Now, I want to put something in perspective. So this is kind of a bonus on the three big things you need to know. I was running some numbers for a client today on a $290,000 purchase, and they were going to put 20% down. And I said, why do you want to put 20% down if you'll qualify for 5%? And they said, well, I don't want to pay PMI. My comment is, Why wouldn't you want to pay PMI? Many people think that PMI is bad. PMI is great. Why is PMI great? Because you can put less money down and leverage your money and keep your cash working for you in the bank. Now, if you are just an average investor in the stock market, mutual funds, you should be making 15 plus percent on your investments. Okay, I made well over 25%. I've met a few people that have made over 35%. Now, that's not consistent. You can expect about 7.5% on average, but the next year or so, you should be able to easily make 15%. So now, should you put 5% down on a house or should you put 20% down? I ran a scenario. Cash to close on a $290,000 house with 20% down, you needed about $64,500. Payment was about $1,341. 5%, you only needed $21,300. Payment was $1,577. The payment is $236 more. But you get to keep $43,000 in your bank account. Now, what would you do with $43,000? You put it in the bank. You make 15% interest on it. Your interest on that loan or on the on your investment is greater than the extra amount that you're going to pay on your payment because your payment was $236 more you're making about $300 profit by keeping your own money in the bank and that's only at 15%. It's a no-brainer, man. It's a no-brainer. So, if you want me to run those numbers, let me just show you the differences in 5% versus 20%. Owner occupied only. Call me. Lone Arranger, you got the number.